All right, uh, let's uh, turn our attention to the big board here, and uh, we'll just uh, let you go ahead and, uh, and sling it as uh, the big board for this week, the professor, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Defo, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, the NBA All-Star Game Brilliant. Post- posted record low ratings, the lowest yes. ratings they've had in the modern era uh, on Sunday night, which goes with my personal theory that all All-Star Games at this point should be canceled. And honestly, <laughs> comp- compliments to the NFL this year, who yeah, so exactly. totally thrashed the Pro Bowl weekend that there's no way this thing's going to last more than the yeah. year or two before they yeah. just cancel it. It's the exactly. NFL just put out pure garbage. Yeah. And then to let you know that it was pure garbage, brought in Pete Davidson to host it. Because <laughs> like a perfect person. Like, we are yeah. just pulling out a pure pile of shit. And here is America's worst celebrity to present it to you. Yeah. And on top of it, let Pete Davidson show up totally stoned on national television <laughs> to host it. So, like, yeah. I compliments to Roger Goodell and the National Football League on just saying, yes, we are acknowledging that all-star games are car- total garbage and should not exist. So we are going <laughs> to do some stupid challenge that nobody wants to watch and follow up that with a flag football game hosted by Pete Davidson. Yeah. Just to see how many of you are so pathetic that you'll actually watch it. <laughs> He's going to uh, kick off the uh, combine ceremonies and they're going to measure his schlong. <laughs> No, say, okay, don't now let you see why. anywhere near the NFL combine. I still yeah. want to watch the NFL combine. Yeah. Screw that. Keep the Davidson <laughs> away from it. Um, but again, compliments to the NFL because all all star games should be done away with. I know that Major League Baseball still has its fans. If you want to yeah. do Major League Baseball, go ahead. I don't care. I don't watch it anyway. Uh, but the NBA totally falling apart at this point. Nobody wants to watch it. I don't know what this stupid Let's draft players and then play a game like it's some pickup game yeah. nonsense. Is. As if you're at the I don't line. know where the hell that came from. <laughs> yeah, I again, I don't get it. And the NBA All Star Game has certainly had a lot of lows over the years. Yes, um, there's been some highs. You know, people love the free throw line dunk by Jordan. Uh, you know, everybody except Philadelphia loved when Kobe went back to Philadelphia and was the MVP of the game, and then the Philly fans booed the hell out of him, which. Yes. I personally really enjoyed because I detested Kobe <laughs> at that point in his career. Um, but, you know, there, there's been some highs, but there's been a lot of lows over the year yeah. uh, in, in the NBA. And that's what we're going to discuss on the big board this week. It's the big board of the NBA All-Star Bleak End. <laughs> <laughs> well titled, my friend. And we're going to go to number five which I don't know if this is even high enough on the big board. It was a very interesting moment. Let's take you back to 2015, where people weren't watching NBA All-Star Saturday because nobody ever heard of was in the dunk contest. Nobody really gave a damn about the three-point contest. And it was even by the point in time where big men were participating in the stupid skills challenge, because that's what we want to see. Chris stops poor dingus, throw a bounce pass into a net. <laughs> that's a, so the NBA tried something new. And that was, oh, two ball. <laughs> this one, 2015. Oh, this yeah, was Little League for 20. They actually replaced the dunk contest one year with two ball in their desperate attempt to push the WNBA onto an America that wants absolutely nothing to do with women's basketball <laughs> to the point where they got legitimate players. In this case, Clyde Drexler was about 75 years old at the time. <laughs> and they paired him with Cynthia Cooper, who I think had been pregnant about 45 seconds before she started the two-ball contest. <laughs> and they won. <laughs> on top of it, did they play two-on-two? Did they do something interesting? Did they have a lower basket woman's dunk contest? No. They played some game called two-ball that nobody had ever heard of. That nobody <laughs> knew existed. Yeah. Again, a real low moment for the NBA All-Star Weekend trying to get the WNBA to participate, which America reacted with what America's always reacted to, the NWA, WNBA, by not watching. Remember that We Got Next campaign when they first uh, came on the scene? And, uh, you know, it, you, you were so appalled by the number of uh, times that you've been hit over the head with yeah. We Got Next that uh, you couldn't stomach yep. watching one second of WNBA basketball. Now, I think that set the league back light years. 
It wasn't the number of times they hit you over the head, Defoe. Yeah. It was the number of times they tried to focus on Rebecca Lobo's head, Lobo. which was the size of an Easter <laughs> Island statue. <laughs> they had her screaming, we got next to the camera. They couldn't get her head into focus. <laughs> I don't know how that – I mean, look, she's a great basketball player today, but yeah. I don't know how she walks with that watermelon on top of a pen. <laughs> <laughs> and they tried to build the league around her because they had loved her at UConn, which, again, yeah. I questioned the whole state of Connecticut based on their love of women's basketball. Like, I don't know it, it how that insane. has become a source of state pride for them. It's like, I, 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 it's like Florida being proud – because of our cocaine. Like, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get uh, Connecticut's obsession. And again, the country responded to Rebecca Lobo. And we got next with Jesus. Your head's huge. I can't take that. That, <laughs> that doesn't fit on my television. <laughs> All right. Two ball. A excellent start. The uh, bleak end. NBA All-Star bleak end. Number four, as previously mentioned, 2015, the WNBA brought in a oh, fashion yeah. show. That was the worst. Where everybody expected James Harden to steal the show, and he showed up in a white raincoat for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> like There's so many My mom has that. <laughs> things going on here. Again, a fashion show. This is what you thought sports fans wanted. And and honestly, you let James Harden be one of the stars and you didn't yeah. know something weird was going to happen. <laughs> as I have said J about James Harden before, nowhere in history has anybody been as good as a thing as James Harden is at basketball and still so unwatchable. Yes. Yes. Like James Harden's whole career, both in basketball and in life, is to make you stop watching, is to make it as painful as possible for, me, for you to You're look at me right. doing a thing. Yes. Again, there's never been anybody as talented who is as hard to watch in any everything he does as James Harden is. And then you combine it because, of course, at the time he was dating Khloe Kardashian. So you try to let the Kardashians influence what went on in the All-Star game. Yeah, that was a great idea. Let's combine <laughs> the Kardashians with they our already hard defense. to watch NBA All-Star weekend. <laughs> who the hell was supposed to watch that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Harden shows up in some weird-looking stuff. I, I mean, Westbrook, uh, you know, he, he wasn't an all-star, but, uh, you know, might might have been a better choice there. Here's to, uh, the come thing. Up with something. As much as Harden was a bad idea, you know who else was the star of the fashion show? Which probably, again, should have told you this was an ill-conceived concept from the start. It was J.R. Smith who showed up in a fox stall. <laughs> Yeah, let's create an event centered around how J.R. Smith, the man who couldn't keep his shirt on at a parade, dresses. That <laughs> seems like a fantastic idea. That's what Fashion America show. wants. Yeah. More J.R. Smith not playing basketball. <laughs> All right, that's uh, number four on the uh, big board of the NBA All-Star Bleak End. Number three, and uh, of course, we talked a lot about national anthems here on the big board and the show. It's actually where the big board started was with national anthems through history. And the NBA probably had the greatest national anthem in the history of sports national anthems uh, in Marvin Gaye's 1983 rendition, uh, often cited as the greatest sports national anthem of all time, along with uh, Whitney Houston at the Super Bowl. Oh, Whitney Houston, yeah. that, that was. Uh, but uh, if you had to pick best. a moment where it hit the wall for the NBA, it was actually a national anthem, and that is... Fergie's 2013 <laughs> National Anthem at the All-Star Game, where if you saw this, you would not be surprised in the least that Fergie went into rehab for meth addiction about three months after she sang it. And we're laughing at that again. And she still, no, they get, all compliments to Fergie because never yeah. has any human being managed to remain this good looking while being addicted to meth. <laughs> no, that's true. Yeah, usually you lose your teeth first and then that uh, goes downhill from there. <laughs> but if you remember this all-star game, first of all, the West was basically just the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. And then they trotted out Fergie, who I don't yeah. even know how to describe this. Like, she, I don't know if she was just stoned and not knowing what she was doing or if she tried to overdo it with the, oh, no, I'm really a soul singer because I'm part of the Black Eyed Peas. I'm not just here to be a piece of ass. I'm very talented. All of which the answer <laughs> to is no. I did. 
to top it off, the Warriors couldn't stop laughing at her. Like Draymond Green <laughs> yeah. had to make faces throughout the entire national anthem to avoid busting out laughing. And again, it wasn't disrespectful. It was how the entire country reacted to this. <laughs> <laughs> so if Definitely you had to pick a moment where it hit the wall yeah. for the NBA All-Star game, I feel like you have a very high moment here, which was Fergie's national anthem. <laughs> um, pretty much the NBA All-Star game has been done since this. Like, guys were looking at it like, you brought, trot this out for uh, – for the national anthem, and then I'm supposed to play defense. Come on, guys. I'm supposed to care about who wins this. I'm supposed to care about who wins this game after you've brought out this. And again, she remained great looking through a meth addiction somehow. Don't know how that happened. Uh, but yeah, to sing, this was a real I mean, honestly, Carl Lewis watched that and was like, damn, that's a shit <laughs> national anthem. He looked like Robert Merrill compared to uh, the Fergie <laughs> national anthem. Uh, all right, uh, that's number three. On a Honestly, big board. Uh, yes, he looked like as a national anthem singer, like for, like a meth high on meth Fergie would look running a hundred yard dash. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> throwing a couple of hurdles. Yeah, <laughs> maybe the long jump. Uh, all right, very good. Number three, uh, we're up to number two. The big board of the NBA All Star Bleakin with the professor. Number two centers around the dunk contest. And man, there's a lot of ways we can go with the dunk contest. It could be Nate Robinson missing 37 dunks before <laughs> finally hitting one Winning. and being declared the winner because everybody was so amazed that a 5'10 guy who was built like a Volkswagen Beetle somehow managed <laughs> to win the dunk contest. It could be any of the years where Dwight Howard went, where we were supposed to be impressed that a seven foot guy could dunk. Again, he was a great dunker, but come on, you're seven feet tall. It could be Tom Chambers, where everybody was amazed that a six foot ten white guy could dunk. <laughs> but no, there is a particular moment in the dunk contest that stands out in the low, and it's not just because he missed the dunk. It was when Michael Finley tried to do the cartwheel dunk, <laughs> and we all discovered that not only could he not make the dunk, but he couldn't do a cartwheel. <laughs> I don't even know what you would call this a quarter yeah. wheel, a wheel barrel. Yeah, it's it ugly. That looks like my not, version of it. It's like it when was, an eight year old does a car. Yeah. I was it never was good at tumbling in my gym class. Wheel. And again, if you watch Michael Finley's career, he's an incredibly athletic dude. He's Man. also an incredibly athletic dude, athletic dude who had clearly never tried to do a cartwheel before. Because <laughs> <laughs> if he had practiced this, all his teammates would have reacted the exact same way all the All-Stars reacted, which is just laugh hysterically at him. And his <laughs> total inability to do a move that every seven-year-old girl on the planet has already mastered somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that looks like uh, the tumbling class at Yeshiva. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, <laughs> and that's the demonstration. Exactly. All right, everybody, now try this. Um, excellent. Uh, the dunk contest. What do you think about the uh, kid that uh, won the thing? That uh, you know, I, I disproving uh, you know that uh, white men can't jump. I mean, uh, this, uh, okay. this kid had incredible hang time. Again, if you're familiar at all with Matt McClung from Georgetown yeah. or Texas Tech, you already knew this. Uh, there's there's been clips of him since high school. High school, yeah, uh, doing ridiculous dunks. But really, your clue would have been when the NBA made the 76ers give this kid a contract just so he yes. could be in the dunk contest. That was great, yeah. They, they said, like, they you go. you got three days. The league, like, who owes us? <laughs> you have to sign Matt McClung. <laughs> you. So we can be in the dunk contest and we can have somebody yeah. try. Look, the dunks were ridiculous. Um, he can't play at all, at least not yeah. at the NBA <laughs> level. There's a reason he was in the G League 30 minutes before the dunk contest started. Uh, but no, as, as a couple of people observed, yeah, if they went to all these shenanigans to put him in the contest, you knew he was going to be a ridiculous dunker. Yes. So it's not like a shock. Um, again, the dunk contest, uh, Luby and I were talking about the other day. Nobody cares how good a dunker Matt McClung is. Like, no. you, you want to see the stars dunk. And I don't really yeah. don't know what's so hard about this and why stars don't want to do the dunk contest anymore. It doesn't make – I mean, I, look – if Luka, if Luka Doncic doesn't want to do the dunk contest, I get it. <laughs> yeah. But it's not like there aren't a bunch of ridiculously yeah. athletic stars who could do the contest. People uh, want to see LeBron, you know. Sure. Yeah, uh, Zion. 
Hey, come on. All right. Um, that's number two, the current wheel dunk. And, and this is number one. Of the, you know, uh, we couldn't avoid All-Star controversy, weekend. but if there is a worst moment of NBA All-Star Weekend, I think it's pretty clear. The NBA All-Star Game managed to hang on for a few years after this. But was there a low moment in the NBA All-Star Game? Yep. It's the AIDS game. Oh, no. oh man. I, you know what? The AIDS game from where I, you see in the picture here. No nobody on the Eastern Conference roster wanted yeah. to be within six feet of Magic Johnson. <laughs> no Magic. matter how close he got the game. The only exception, yeah. as has been observed, was Dennis Rodman, Rodman, who got right up in his face. He's like, I fucked Madonna. They don't even have words for what I have. <laughs> I'll go up to That's I'll let you spit here. in my mouth. I don't care how much. <laughs> but as People you can are see, worried about the Schwitz transmission. Um, as you can uh, see my... from Scotty Pippen and Charles Barkley, as Magic goes right through the middle of the lane, yeah. nobody else wanted to touch Magic. Nobody else wanted to be near Magic's infected blood at this point. Yeah. And everybody else... Honestly, I'm surprised Barkley didn't come out in a hazmat suit for this game. <laughs> <laughs> you watch the highlights. Barkley was the most physical player in the league. Didn't want to be on the same side of the court as Magic Johnson, who came back and won the won the uh, the MVP, MVP while everything. playing yeah. with AIDS. Magic Johnson, who, I don't know, has magic blood. I did. If you watch the series The Last of Us, I'm convinced the story of the little girl is actually about Magic Johnson and Ace. <laughs> hey, we're, like, we're like 22 years later, Magic Johnson's still healthier than he's ever been. Yeah. Oh, well, I, 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 he never turned to AIDS, and he's like the only case, one of the rare cases that went to like remission, which is not even a thing for fucking HIV. Yeah. Again. Who, whoever Magic. that German doctor was that was uh, working with him, I mean, how, how is he not winning the Nobel Prize? Magic uh, Johnson Prize? somehow is to AIDS what Lance Armstrong lied about being with cancer. Like, yeah, I got cancer, yeah. got better. Magic Johnson actually did get AIDS and get healthier somehow. I don't, I don't understand yeah. it. <laughs> no, that, that was, I, I remember that, uh, you know, and uh, everybody was worried that because at that point, uh, people thought uh, yeah, literally you, you could get it just from uh, having somebody schwitz in your eyeball. Again, I, I, I don't know that anybody actually. I don't know that Magic was Moses Malone in that category, but uh, I mean, I, I don't remember him being like uh, you know bone dry. I feel like either. scientists actually no, didn't feel like that at that too. point, but Moving like in. nobody else yeah, really we, understood that, which again leads to this picture as an example. Nobody in the NBA, even Isaiah yeah, yeah. Thomas, stayed like six feet away from him at this point. <laughs> oh so, yeah, nobody wanted to go near this guy. Nope. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and, and, and it set the precedent for the way defense is played yeah, in uh, these games. Pretty much, as you mentioned, yes. uh, the Kardashians, had they been on the floor, could have played better defense <laughs> than we saw he in asked the NBA. Me the other day, game. he was like, "Yeah, guys used to play a little bit of defense at least at the end of the game. Where did that start? That stopped playing the token defense. It was yeah. the AIDS game. Like again, <laughs> everybody stayed the hell away from, and, you know, and it was celebrated as a great moment. Yeah. He came back. He did, you know, I don't know, led people with AIDS or whatever it is." I don't, I, I don't know what it was that Magic was supposed to prove there. Um, but, yeah, that was where the absolutely no defense thing started, and then it has lasted for the next 20-some-odd years. It's become tradition like no another. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you need Jim Nance calling the game. Huh? <laughs> Beautiful.